Welcome back. Here we are. The last formal is this formalizing part of Unit 5 in Chapter 7. So um, I made one error on my notes that, again, you can get copies of all this down below. Um, that should have been the difference of means and not the difference of proportions. My deepest apologies because you guys do deserve better. Um, so sampling distribution of the difference of means. A couple of things. First of all, remember, just as always, you need to check the shape. It should be normal. The two ways that you can check the normality, and again, I'm sorry, both different populations need to be normal. And the way that you check that is um, either the population of this um, that you're taking the one of the, either sample from is pop, um, approximately normal, or your sample size is greater than or equal to 30. And again, this has to be true for both different samples for this to work. What comes next after shape? You got it, center. Sorry, I slide that back down. Um, so the difference, uh, the mean of the differences of the two samples is going to be the same as the difference between the two population means. And again, there's that bridge step here where you're taking this mean of the two, I mean, technically you're taking the difference of the means of the two samples, but again, that's the same as the population. And then after that is variability. And we went through this in the previous video in terms of how this is derived. So if you need to see that, you can jump back to like the last minute and a half of part one. In terms of what the distribution is going to look like in the normal cal calculation, you get this normal curve. You've got your mean and your standard deviations there. And then again, here, as we talked about earlier, oftentimes, well, again, this is your sample mean, this is your population mean, here's your standard deviation. A lot of this you may be doing separately in the problem, okay? But it's still probably going to be a good idea to write everything else out. And so there's the basics. Now, the problem that I want you guys to look through on your own is this. Um, they're checking to see if the um, cost of living in California, what the difference is the cost of living between California and Florida. I've underlined some of the important stuff. So in California, notice it's approximately normal. So that means that that fulfills our normality thing. We've got a mean and standard deviation for that one. In Florida, also approximately normal mean and standard deviation. And then they give you our sample sizes here and here. Now notice here, instead of going one and two, we're going to use um, subscripts of C and F for California and Florida. That's usually one of those good ways to go through and do it. So go ahead and hit pause. Take a look at, I think there's three questions. Yeah, three parts to this, and we'll see you in a minute. Welcome back. All right. So the shape of this is going to be approximately normal because, again, remember, it, both populations need to be approximately normal. So in this case here, since both populations are approximately normal, the sampling distributions of the difference is going to be approximately normal. I misspoke there. Either both populations have to be normal or your sample sizes have to be large enough. So in this case, one of the best things you will find is that it will say the population is approximately normal or assume that it's approximately normal because it takes a lot of the pressure off. You can just say, yep, we're good to go. In terms of your mean, mean is just the two differences. The mean um, from California is $10,800. The mean from Florida is $8,500. So there's a difference of $2,300. And then for your standard deviation, again, here's the formula. And so we're going to do this separately out here. 3,200 squared divided by 16, 2,700 squared divided by 9. Sum them, square root them, and you get 1204.16. I feel like a car dealer there. <laughs> Anyway, so then for the last part down here, um, calculate the probability that the average monthly cost is for somebody in California is actually less than somebody in Florida. Now, notice here the neat thing about being able to do differences is that we want the difference to be zero. It doesn't matter to some extent how high these two numbers are. We're just saying what's the chances that the difference is going to be less than zero. So it's kind of a neat way to take care of scaling sometimes. But we'll talk more about that as we go. Curve, we want less than zero. We're going 2,300 to um, 2,300 is my mean, standard deviation. So here's the big formula up here. Again, you're going to want to write this out to indicate to the AP reader and any mathematicians reading your work that you understand where all of this is coming from. But notice again, the 2,300 we already have, the zero we're coming from the problem, and the standard deviation we've already calculated. So all of this is already done. And to be honest, if you try to put everything in here in one time and type it all into your calculator, it's not going to work anyway. Um, so this all becomes gives you a z-score of a negative 1.91. So you know it's going to be, since it's almost 2, it's going to cover a large part of our population or a very small part of our population, depending on what side we're shading. So in this case here from table A, 
we end up getting a probability that the difference of the means of cost of living um, from California to Florida is less than zero. It's going to actually only be 0 0.028. Technically, there should be another zero back there. So my apologies. But that wraps it up for Chapter 7 and sampling distributions. Hopefully, you learned something. If you have any questions, throw it down below. If you liked it, hit like. Tell a friend about it. Tell somebody in class about it. Um, unless, of course, I suppose you're trying to beat them in the class. But that's not what AP is about, right? Anyway, we'll talk to you soon.